Uh, and speaking of Florida, the search is still ongoing for Brian Laundry. Uh, this is the fiance, the person of interest in connection with the death of his girlfriend, Gabby Petito, uh, whose remains were found in Wyoming, and ultimately her death was ruled a homicide. And while Mr. Laundry is not a suspect currently or wanted for the arrest of the murder of Gabby Petito, he is, there is a warrant for his arrest regarding the unauthorized use of a debit card. And the search for Mr. Brian Laundry and what answers he has regarding Petito is still ongoing. There are these new tips that keep coming in. There was just recently, over the weekend, uh, a man said that he saw 100% Brian Laundry near the Appalachian Trail. So as these tips come in, as Dog the Bounty Hunter is on the case, uh, we will continue to follow what happens. But we can't forget that this is all about Gabby Petito's death and the people who loved her and want her memory to remain. So there was a press conference that was actually held by the Petito family. Let's take a listen. What's next? Guys, uh, I apologize. We just have one question over here. What's next? What's next? Um, Yeah, we don't stop, you know, remembering Gabby and keeping her name out there and, and fighting for, for other people out there like her. Uh, she's always with us every day. She's giving us signs. Uh, it's difficult. You know, we've been talking. We don't, like, where do you go from here? How do you go back to normal? Whatever normal may be from here on out. But we have each other. Uh, we're, we're a big family. We have a huge support network. And we're just going to keep pushing forward and living every day and loving every day because that's what Gabby did and that's what that's what we, we need to do. You know, a lot of people would be very angry right now. Can you talk about the are you angry at some level have anger or is it just not happening yet? We go through our bouts. It's, it's an emotional roller coaster. It's there's ups and downs. Um, days that we're full of pain and grief, um, sometimes angry, but you stop, you take a breath, you remember Gabby and all the great times we had with her, and all the good memories, and all the good things we want to do in her name in the future, and that's what, that's what picks you up, that's what carries you through, and hopefully will keep us going from, from here on out. And Jim, what kind of signs has he been giving you? Could you step up a little bit? Thanks. We, we, we actually got behind a car yesterday, and there was um, a Wyoming sticker, and the, the letters were GBZ. Gabs. So Gabs. <laughs> She's with us. She's with us. She's with us. All right. Let's talk about this, Doctor. Um, I feel that one of the real struggles for this family is not knowing more of what happened, not having an answer here. Walk us through what you're seeing, what you think the family is going through, and that lack of an explanation, uh, because again, we don't know what Brian Laundrie knows. We don't even know the cause of death of uh, Miss Petito. The family might, um, but at this point, I figure that lack of answers is probably, probably making this even harder for them. Grief is always difficult, um, but, it, but it becomes a lot more complex in this case, especially because there's so many different contributing factors. Number one, um, w when it's your child that dies. Number two, when it's um, homicide or murder, which of course is unexpected. And three, as you mentioned, just the lack of answers, the lack of closure, the lack of really justice in this case. So there's all of these layers here that are making it a lot more difficult for this family to grieve um, because they really never get a break, right? Constantly, every day, they're having to deal with press or, you know, there's there may be new developments and there's a lot of press on the coverage and, and, and search for Brian Laundry, And so that's taking a, a lot of time and energy from, you know, really where they could be spending time grieving and with their family. It's going to take them quite a bit. Yeah. And you know what the other thing is, is, is hindsight 2020, because what we are looking at as well and what is under investigation are the officers who stopped the couple in Utah. This happened two weeks, I believe, uh, Gabby went, before Gabby uh, ultimately went missing. And this is, becomes a question, should the officers have done more? Should they have made arrests when they were called to this reported domestic violence incident? Uh, that becomes the question, because many people, critics out there are saying, well, if they made arrests at this point, maybe Gabby would still be alive. Let's go to this newly released body cam footage, and we'll talk about it on the other side. Gabby, this is a very, very important question. 
How you answer this question is going to determine what happens next. But the only person who can answer this question is you. Think very hard before you answer the question. Do not quickly answer it. Think very hard. When you slapped him those times, were you attempting to cause him physical pain or physical impairment? Was that what you were attempting to do to him? No. What were, you, what were you attempting to do? What was the reason behind the slapping and stuff? What was, what was it you were attempting to accomplish by slapping? I was trying to get him to stop telling me to hunt down. Okay. So, Joe, when we look at this, and we played uh, footage earlier, we played footage throughout this case, where the officers seem to not be decided on whether or not they're going to charge them, they're going through the law, they speak to Laundry about whether he wants to press charges, they have an understanding that he was grabbing her face, she was slapping him while driving. This was a big mess. The question I ask you is, should arrests have been made, and if arrests were made that day, would that have changed the course of events to follow, even though we still don't have a ton of answers as to what happened to Gabby. You know, it's tempting to speculate and say if there had been an arrest, then perhaps she would not have been killed later. Um, we can say that, but it's but it's terribly unfair to say it. And that can't be the reason why they would make an arrest when the law doesn't necessarily support it. You had a he said, she said situation um, where they probably resolved it or propose to resolve it the way that similar cases were proposed to be resolved. Basically, a no contact, you guys stay away from each other for 24 hours. And this might be frustrating in the eyes of someone who is looking at a victim and saying, boy, this person needs to be taken out of this situation, and they're not. It's clear she's scared to death. And the way that they built up that question for her, she was, she was, she was distraught before she answered it. So, you know, there's something very, very wrong there, but it had much to do with the situation that she was in, right? And so you go back to if she had, if they had arrested him, would it have, would it have turned out the way that it did? And we don't know that it would or that it wouldn't have. Um, and it's hard to say that they should have done something looking all the way around the corner um, at the possibility, which was a relatively uh, minor possibility, at least in their eyes, uh, that this would end up being um, what it ended up be becoming. But it's it's sad. It's terrible. I feel for the family because I've gone through similar things with my family. Um, and it's just, you know, you can't help but wonder if this could have been done differently or, or it should have been done differently. Morally, you, you wish that it would have been. Uh, but uh, there's only so much uh, officers in that situation uh, could possibly do in the law. Yep, and look, the investigation is ongoing into that incident. Uh, initial statement from the police department was they didn't observe any red flags or anything that was uh, broke protocol, but we'll wait and see. We'll take a break. When we'll come back, we'll have more. Hi, this is Dan Abrams with exciting news for all of our law and crime followers on YouTube. You can now get the live Law & Crime Network with YouTube TV for all of your daily live trial coverage, legal news, expert analysis, and original true crime programs. Subscribe to YouTube TV today and then locate Law & Crime in the channel guide. And for only $1.99 a month, you can add the network to your bundle. Watch Law & Crime every day with YouTube TV. We put you in the jury box.